Hi, I'm Dr. Yari Collado Vega. I'm a scientist. I work for the Community Coordinated Modeling Center, CCMC, at Goddard Space Flight Center. I'm the lead for the Space Weather Forecasting Team, and I'm going to tell you today how is the weather in space. However, to understand the weather in space, we have to understand and analyze the sun. And that is because space weather, that's how we define it, is defined as the activity in space that is mostly dominated by the sun. And we have several missions actually looking at the sun, and one of them is Solar Dynamics Observatory, or SDO. And here you have one of those images. You're looking at the visible continuum here, and this will be very similar to an image that will look from the ground telescope, from a ground telescope here at Earth. And you see the sunspot, which most of the people are very familiar with. However, SDO does have several wavelengths that actually help you to see the sun in different temperatures. And it goes all the way from cooler temperatures, which is light purple color there on the left, all the way to the right that you're gonna to go to the dark green color, that's the hotter temperatures. So you're going all the way from the surface of the sun to the solar corona, which is its atmosphere. The interesting part here is that the sun, the surface is much cooler than the solar corona. And this is something that scientists are still trying to figure out why this happens. And also because of we have this capability of looking at the different wavelengths, you're seeing different layers, different features. And if, when you look at the sunspot that you see right there in the visible, going through all those wavelengths, you're going to see how the sunspot actually changes, how it actually looks very, very different. Now you're not seeing the sunspot, you're not seeing the surface part, you're going to see the solar corona part and you're going to see the active region. These are the regions in space where most of the activity actually comes from, the solar flares and corona mass ejections. Not only that, like I said, when you look at this wavelength, you see different features. You see filaments, you see coronal holes, you see, you see many different features on the sun because you're looking at different temperatures, different layers. And this helps us understand the dynamics of the sun. And it helps us also to do a better, to analyze it better, to do better forecasting for space weather. Now, when we look at the sun, in this composite video, you're actually looking at different wavelengths of SDO, the same mission that I showed you before, and you're actually looking at a solar flare. A solar flare is an abrupt eruption of radiation. It's an energy release in, uh, across the whole spectrum, travels to the speed of light, gets here to Earth in eight minutes, which means that when you see a signal of a solar flare, that means that it's here. There's nothing you can do about it. So forecasting a flare is something very tricky. It's very complicated. However, scientists are trying to understand how they can do this. Um, flares cause many problems in the upper atmosphere. One of them is uh, problems in radio communications. Not only that, when you have a flare that is very intense like this one, they have different classifications, they sometimes come associated with a coronal mass ejection, which is something very different that a lot of people confuse. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more in the next slide. But you know, this kind of activity, this flare, the major solar flare with the combined CME can cause also acceleration of high energy particles. And these are really, really, really important. Now, when we talk about coronal mass ejections, which is completely different to a solar flare, now you have a big explosion of particles from the solar corona. We're talking about billions of particles, billions of particles getting ejected from the, from the corona. And you can see one right here. This is a very big one, very nice one. When you have a corona mass ejection like this one, this is actually looking at another SDO movie. This is three or four Anstrom. It's a little bit cooler than the other wavelengths that you were looking at. You can see the plasma being ejected, right? You can see those particles being ejected. But when you look at these images, you can only see the source. From here, you cannot say or see where the CME is going. To do that, you need a coronagraph. You need an artificial eclipse, which is what the SOHO coronagraph does. This is an image from SOHO, the Solar Heliospheric Observatory. It's located at L1, Lagrangian point one. 
has been there for more than 20 years and we still use it now every day um, and you have to block the sun like this to be able to see where those CMEs are going and are traveling and this is actually a very active period in October in 2003 it's called a Halloween storm because it happened in Halloween time um, and you can see the CMEs traveling at all directions but there's one that is going to be earth directed and when you see that CME, which is coming soon, right there, you see that rain? Those are the particles that I was talking about in the previous slides. These are the particles that have been accelerated by this kind of activity. These are high energetic particles. They're accelerated to fractions of the speed of light. These are the particles that cause most of the problems to the instrumentation of satellites in space and can cause a hazardous environment to the astronauts in space. These are the particles that are very important for us to forecast. At the CCMC, we thrive to, you know, support their research for space weather and to support the deployment and development of the new space weather tools, models, and different capabilities. One of the things that we do in the experimental forecasting team that we have is we analyze the CMEs to make sure that we understand where they're going and when they're going to arrive because we want to support NASA missions. And this is one of the models that we use. Uh, here we have the sun in the center. We have different planets, the Mercury, M Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. We have stare behind, stare ahead. It's another mission looking at the sun. And then we have Jupiter over here. And this is the side view. And this is one of the simulations that we use to understand where the CMEs are going and when they're going to arrive. And when I play, you will see many CMEs being ejected. That's one of the big ones right there. It's going earth directed. And then you have several smaller ones and then you have a big one right there that is going towards stair ahead here. This is one of the very big CMEs, um, very high speed. CMEs, depending on their speed, take about two to four days to arrive to earth, for example. Um, you can have all the way from 500 kilometers per second to 3,000 kilometers per second in the most extreme cases. Um, this is an event that happened in July 2012, and a lot of scientists believe that we got lucky that we didn't get the CME to be Earth directed. Uh, it happened in the far side because it was a very strong uh, high speed CME that could cause a lot of what we call the geomagnetic storm, the disturbance in the magnetic field of the Earth. Uh, when it arrived, if it arrived at Earth. This is actually a visualization uh, done with <clears throat> uh, input from the solar wind. And you can have here the CME, you have the CME arriving at Earth and you can see how the particles get deflected because we have the magnetic shield, we have that magnetosphere of the Earth that it actually protects us from those high energetic particles. However, sometimes the particles do enter, we have a lot of energy transfer and mass transfer to, and we have what we call the disturbance of the magnetic field, which is what we call a geomagnetic storm. And you can also have soft storms, and then we have what we call the auroras, which are beautiful um, to see, but when the aurora happens, that means that we have a disturbance of the magnetic field that is on the Earth that it has been caused by the solar activity. There's many space weather effects that I can mention. This is a slide that shows you uh, most of them. Um, you know, I've been already mentioning the damage to spacecraft electronics, you know, the uh, problems with um, radiation effects on avionics, GPS signal loss, uh, communication, um, satellite uh, disruptions. Um, you can have power grid disruptions too, which are very, very important. It has happened before that you know, big cities have been without power um, because of the sun's activity. And this is something that is really important for us to understand so we can mitigate any of the effects that the solar activity could happen, could have at Earth, and also to protect our missions out there and in the future, you know, the human space exploration activities. So this is a movie from the ISS looking at the beautiful aurora. aurora like I said, I, I do say that the aurora is the rainbow of space weather. And I would love to see one in person. I haven't done it in my life. I, I, that's one of my bucket list things that I have to do. But when you see an aurora, it's something beautiful. But what happens is you're actually seeing the result of the magnetic field dist being disturbed by the sun's activity. 
Now we, this is just to show you a little bit of the heliophysics fleet. We have um, approximately about 20 missions out there, um, which is not a lot. You know, if you look at the volume of space that we have to cover, it's huge. And we are trying to forecast what is going on, how the solar wind interacts with different planets, with the different missions, what happens when you have solar activity and the CMEs, where, where they're going, when they impact, what happens with the missions, you know, the high energetic particles, the SEPs, how they can damage the satellites, what, you know, how we can forecast these particles to understand the radiation environment that astronauts could be in. It's a lot. It's a lot of analysis that we have to do, and it's a big volume in space. Um, but we're getting there and, you know, this is what space weather is and it's a very exciting field that there's a lot of questions to answer, but that's what makes research so interesting in this field. Thank you very much.